Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be back in the United States. As you can tell, we are back home in our apartment and today I'm going to be doing a little bake with me video. But I figured while we bake, I will do just like a little chat with me, catch up, tell you about what happened in Jamaica. So yeah, I'm really excited to be back home and be baking again and be back in my own kitchen. And so today I'm going to be making gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free, sugar-free cinnamon rolls. You can also say gluten-free, vegan, sugar-free cinnamon rolls. But if you don't know, I normally eat gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free for the most part. And then my mom right now is doing a 30-day detox, which requires her to be sugar-free as well. So I decided that I wanted to try and make something that she could eat too, because since Ryan and I missed out on Christmas because we were quarantined, we are actually having my family Christmas tomorrow. So I wanted to make these cinnamon rolls and make them to where my mom could eat them because I know the struggle of going to holiday events and like not being able to eat things because of your like sensitivities or your restrictions. So I know what you're thinking. Those probably sound gross <laughs> to be free of like everything and especially sugar. But I had a lot of time to research while I was quarantined in Jamaica and we'll get into that in a minute. So what I'm actually going to be using today is monk fruit. So I'm going to be using this Lakanto brand and um, they basically make monk fruit, which is a natural sweetener. It's not technically sugar because it has a zero on the glycemic index. Um, so it's zero calories, so it's not considered sugar. It's a sweetener. Um, but it does come from natural sources. Monk fruit is a natural fruit. Um, so I'm gonna try this. So I have a one-to-one -one substitute for the cane sugar, powdered sugar, and brown sugar that are gonna be used in this recipe. Um, so yeah, that is what I'm going to be baking today. I will let you guys know how it turns out. I'm going to make them tonight, but probably stick them in the oven tomorrow morning since that's gonna be like our Christmas morning. So I will update y'all tomorrow. Once we're done baking and everything, I'll update you tomorrow on how they turned out and how they look and everything. But I'm gonna go ahead and bake them now and show you guys how to make them. And then I figured we could just chat while I bake. So let's get started. Okay, so first things first, I'll show you again the different sugars I'm gonna be using. Lakanto brand. And so I got a powdered sugar, a brown sugar, and then one to mimic like classic white sugar or cane sugar. Oh, that's the back white sugar or cane sugar. Okay, so we're gonna make the dough first and then we can chat. The dough is done, so that has to sit for 30 minutes. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on to making the sugar, like the sugar filling. So I'm just gonna stir up like the sugar filling mixture and then chat with you guys about Jamaica and all that stuff. So all you need is a third cup of coconut sugar or cane sugar. I'm using the replacement, so it says the cane sugar for this. Um, so I've got like my classic monk fruit sweetener for that. So I'll link this recipe below, um, but I'm basically just replacing any of the sugar ingredients with the one-to-one -one monk fruit sweetener. So what does this need? A third cup of this sugar slash sweetener, and then two teaspoons of ground cinnamon. So since that is really easy, I will fill y'all in on what happened after I tested positive. So I was positive the day before we were supposed to leave, um, but Ryan was actually negative. But on the like resort's website, it says that like if that scenario happens, they'll try to accommodate family members so that you can stay and like stay together. Um, but they originally were telling us that like Ryan could not stay with me and that I would have to quarantine by myself alone and like stay there for two weeks by myself and like no one would be in the country, you know, no family member, no friends that I know would like be anywhere close by, which is what kind of freaked me out that like no one would even be close if like I did start to feel worse. So basically it was actually a really stressful like 48 hours of trying to figure out like what to do from the time that I, that I was positive on Tuesday and we were supposed to leave Wednesday 
and we were trying to like talk to the hotel and figure out if like Ryan could stay and they were telling us like, no, no, he can't stay, no, he can't stay, um, which was like making me really nervous. Um, like people were like coming to pick up Ryan at like 10 in the morning. He needed to like have his bags packed. We were trying to like separate our bags between like what I might need to keep and bring back with me later. Like I should keep the checked bag and like what Ryan's gonna take. And it was just like a bunch of chaos and super stressful, honestly. And I was like so nervous. My stomach was in knots. I like barely ate anything on Tuesday because like I was like so nervous and like stressed about the whole situation. But eventually we were able to talk face to face to the guest services manager. Um, and that's where I kind of was like begging and pleading and like, look, ma'am, I am not staying here in a foreign country by myself with no one I know. And while I'm sick, like at the time I thought it was a cold, like you guys saw that in the video. Like I thought I just had allergies and I never got bad. So I'm like super thankful for that, obviously. But at the time, you know, it's like, I didn't know if I was gonna get worse. So I was like real nervous about not having anyone in the country that I knew or anyone like close by in the country. So I was like, ma'am, I am not staying here by myself in a foreign country over Christmas and over New Year's. Like, can you please find anything? Is there anything you can do to find a way for my husband to stay with me? And so she was like, you know, we'll see if we can get like three or four nights and like rearrange some rooms and like see, you know, we we're like, thank you. Like anything would be better than nothing to like help us figure out what to do with like flights and like just anything to give us more time. So she told us that, you know, she would try to find something for Ryan and she called us back and she was like, we can get him six nights. We can let him stay till December 28th. And we were like, perfect. Like that'd be so great. Thank you. Because even if Ryan just stayed that amount of time, that was going to be like half of my quarantine. That was gonna be like a week, you know, six nights. And I told Ryan, I was like, if you can at least stay with me like half the time, like I can finish the second half by myself. I feel like I would be settled enough and probably feeling completely back to normal by then that like I could do the second leg by myself if I needed to. So Ryan was able to stay, but they put us in separate rooms because I was positive and he was negative. So they're like, laws and policies over there is like to separate the two even though i told them and we both were like he's already been exposed like we've been together this entire trip like that whatever so we were separated into different rooms we weren't together but he was like a few rooms down so he was like close so that was wednesday we get placed in our separate rooms ryan can stay six nights that was wednesday and then thursday ryan started to feel something and he was like oh no so ryan was thinking this through and since I tested positive, they said that I would not need to test again in order to fly out of the country because when you get COVID, you can still test positive like months afterwards. So they weren't gonna make me retest, but Ryan would have to retest because he was negative the first time. So Ryan, like once he started kind of feeling like stuffy nose, like a little bit of a sore throat, like he couldn't tell what he was feeling, but he was like, I swear I feel something. He was like, I should probably go ahead and get tested and we were almost hoping that it would be positive so that he would get the same quarantine time as me and then be able to leave on the same day as me and like get the same 14 day quarantine because in his head he was like crap like what if i'm sick what if i have it and then they test me in january when i'm supposed to leave and then like what if ryan comes back positive at the end of our like two weeks and then he has to stay two more weeks i don't know if that makes sense i hope it does but basically it was like he didn't want to wait too long to get tested in case he was sick because then his quarantine date would be different from mine. So basically he got tested and it came back positive, but that's the short version. Um, but the thing that was dumb is that even after Ryan tested positive, we could not be in the same room. So we were alone and separated the whole time, which does stink, but it was definitely still a big comfort to know that like Ryan was like a few doors down, like if something happened. And I actually called like the nurse and was able to get like vitamin C and zinc and D3 and um, some things like for your immune system. And then I had to like, tell the nurse like take half to my husband and like can I have half so it was like it was so weird because I was trying to like take care of Ryan and like make sure he had stuff and like he was trying to make sure like I had stuff and like we couldn't see each other and they didn't give us any like room keys so like you could not leave your room otherwise you would not be able to get back in um but yeah that is what happened in Jamaica but we are back so excited to be back I have never been happier to be home ever. I told my mom, I was like, there's a reason that there's no place like home is a phrase because I have never felt that more like deep in my soul before ever. 
Um, but truly, there's no place like home. I just could not wait to be back in the US. I could not wait to see my dog. Heidi was away from us for three weeks and it broke my heart. I was so sad, I missed her so much. Oh, I didn't even tell y'all, I had the worst flight experience ever actually on the way back. We got on a flight, I felt perfectly fine. And then all of a sudden, about 30 minutes into the flight, I got the most severe like migraine pain I've ever had. I really don't know if it was a migraine. I've tried to figure it out. I've tried to Google what the heck was happening to my body, but I got like severe like sinus pain and pressure. It was smack dab right in the middle of my face. Everything on the right side of my face was hurting so bad. My teeth were going numb my like roots up here near my teeth, like this whole part right up under here was like killing me from like literally the smack dab of the middle of my teeth over. Like it felt like every single tooth I had, had like a severe toothache. And then it was like my jaw, my sinuses were like killing me so much pressure here. My entire like head and scalp and like, oh man, the worst pain. So I was on a three hour plane ride with the most severe pain I've ever felt for I guess two and a half hours because the first 30 minutes I was fine and then it started like getting worse and worse about 30 minutes into the plane ride. It was the most miserable experience ever. I've never had issues with flying. I've never had pressure and like sinus issues like that. I've always been able to like pop my ears and stuff. I've never had issues with flying ever. So two and a half hours goes by and almost the second that the captain gets on the radio and he says, you know, we'll be starting our descent into Atlanta. We'll land in about 30 minutes. I could feel the plane drop and I could feel the pressure ease up in my face, like in the right side of my face. And almost like immediately, as you could tell, the plane was getting lower and lower in altitude. It started to feel better. Like the pressure and the pain started to get better. And like, I, like I was about to cry from like happy tears of like, oh my gosh, like some sort of relief. Cause it was the most miserable. And Ryan, Ryan will tell you, Ryan's like, she looked so rough. Like Ryan was like genuinely concerned that like I was gonna die. <laughs> Cause it, it was freaky. Like it was kind of scary. Like I can't feel my teeth. Like I can't feel, I don't even know what's happening. It was crazy, but it started to go away as we descended. So then I was like, maybe it was just pressure induced like migraine or like whatever. I've been like Googling, trying to figure out what the heck happened to me. Um, but that's like the closest thing I know to describe it as. I don't know. Because like once we descended, it got better. Just so weird, but I'm still alive. <laughs> We're still kicking. But anyways, that's enough for story time. That was the craziness of the ending of our Jamaica trip. But the first half was great and so fun. Um, so yeah, let's get back to baking. <music> are done and in their dish. I feel like they don't look that gorgeous, but oh my gosh, some of the like sugar butter filling like spilled out and I just straight up ate like a clump of butter <laughs> with the sugar and it is good. <laughs> no shame. So I feel like they'll taste really good. I feel like they look ratchet because I'm a newbie at homemade cinnamon rolls, but honestly, it was really easy. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in the fridge. Like I'm going to cover these with saran wrap, put them in the fridge because I'm not going to bake them until the morning, but I'm going to go ahead and make the icing. And then that's the last thing.
the icing's done. Um, I use the Country Croc plant-based butter for a dairy-free option. And then I use the Planet Oat Original Oat Milk for the milk. And then this was the powdered sugar replacement. Again, it's the Lakanto is the brand of sugar or sweetener, it's not sugar. And then the icing also needed vanilla extract. So that's all that was in the icing. So I'm gonna put the icing in the fridge tonight as well. And then I'll stick them in the oven and put the icing on in the morning before we go to my parents' house. So yeah, I will check back with you guys in the morning. My family's like postponed Christmas. And so I took the cinnamon rolls, we all tried them. They were actually really good. Everyone, like all my family members were like so surprised that they tasted just like cinnamon rolls. So yeah, they were really good. They turned out well. I'll link the recipe down below, but the recipe I'm linking does call for regular sugar. I just substituted with the monk fruit sweetener. If you just substitute all the sugar, it stays the same. Everything else with the recipe stays the exact same. So anyways, it is so good to be back. I'm so happy to be home and be filming again. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you try this recipe. Um, and let me know how you like it because I definitely thought it turned out really well and my family was like so shook that they actually tasted like normal cinnamon rolls. And I feel like if you are someone who has like an allergy or sensitivity and you go to like family gatherings and holidays and stuff and people just assume that like everything you eat just tastes horrible, but it doesn't and it doesn't have to. So I'm really excited about this recipe. So I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you are a frequent viewer. I have some really fun goals for YouTube this year. Um, so be sure to subscribe if you watch my channel and I will see you next time. Bye.